So okay. Tucson-based ceramic artist Kazuma Sambe explores the cultural intersections between the international food industry and the creative and often sometimes strange logic of its advertising. He synthesizes traditional hand building techniques of oriental sculpture with food advertising and packaging. Sambe was born in New York and moved to Japan with his parents when he was four years old. In 2011, he attained a BFA from the University of Arizona and an MFA from Arizona State University in 2014. Thanks. Ready? So do I start now? Yep, you can start okay. now. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, first, yeah, thank you, like Mariana, for yeah, inviting me to do this like this, like a you know, presentation. It's really wonderful opportunities. Then we're living in odd times, so like uh, you know, it's interesting to test it, you know, our new format of presentation. <laughs> so okay, let's get started with the my, my PowerPoint. So do I okay first like sharing the screen, then go to the PowerPoint, share it, and then go to the PowerPoint itself and then make it into slideshow. Okay, do you see just like a slide itself? Okay, then it's working. So my name is Kazuma. And that actually sounds like a not quite familiar, a little exotic name. Yeah, well, it actually was exotic even in Japan. So I was once bullied in elementary school because of like a being a little odd sound of like my name. But what's good is actually once I'm an artist, then if you Google name it, it's an exotic name. So you can find it right away. So that's a good point anyway. <laughs> And well, I'm ceramics artist. So well, short in short, I just play with the clay, use clay to do, do representational sculpture. So I just make a shape with the clay, fire it, then sell it. <laughs> and so I was born in US, but I spent my 15 years in Japan. So like uh, one of my problems I had was I lost all the English language. So when I came back in the US, I had to relearn English from zero. So it was that was a little tough time, but well, that made me like a Japanese American interesting format. So, okay. Um, Jap of course, like uh, some of you might know, like Japanese has really like a rich, versatile ceramics culture there. You know, one you might know as a Shino ware, Imari Arita ware, that is actually import from Chinese like uh, in the format. Then Bizen ware is actually like uh, the, the bottom left, like uh, it's really, really earthy tone, like a ceramics. So it's really versatile and it's on representation, it's on style and the history. It's really really rich culture, but sorry, I was never interested in art when I was young, so I didn't study ceramics when I was a kid at all. Only actually art and craft I saw in a childhood I remember is when I visited temple, Japanese shrines, I saw like a really huge Buddhist figure inside, you know, uh, the temple then. It was really like amazing experience I had. Then also I saw some really intricate sculpture that, you know, that, you know done by a historical architect, which was amazing. And of course, they may, maybe some of you already know that, like a Japanese, you know, Japan is famous for its own popular culture, and especially manga, you know, culture. So when I was 19, I came back to US, but <laughs> for some reason, not in New York, like in my hometown, back in desert for some reason. <laughs> I never know why. And well, since I was not in art, so I just took the ceramics class, like just by kind of like accident or coincidence, some sort of coincidence. But uh, that was when I encountered like uh, one of the brilliant ceramics artists who is actually working at the Pima Community College in Tucson, uh, named Hiroto Shima, and he does humorous, like a figurative sculpture. Then my when I was a kid, like a ceramic, I imagined was only pottery. So that was a surprising moment for me. So that's when I got interested in like art, like, you know, oh, art is not what I, what, what I expected. It's kind of interesting one. So I wanted to like study. So, well, I studied at the U of A, then I was looking for a grad school. Then luckily, actually, one of my best favorite school is just hundred miles away from my home, to, you know, home. So it was really lucky. I applied, I got in, I'm really lucky. So 
I went to ASU Arizona State University then study under Sam John, Kurt Weiser, Susan Biner, those three like a brilliant professors. So that was really amazing moment in my life. And here, uh, then I want to jump into my theme. Uh, so my theme started when I was drinking uh, grape soda without a purple color one day. Well, whenever I drink soda or like, a, you know, orange soda, yeah, should be orange color. You know, pineapple soda should be yellow color. Then purple soda and not like a grape soda should be purple color. But the soda I had didn't have a color inside. So for some, well, oddly, I can taste the grape flavor. So that was like a really light, you know, like lightning striking moment for me because uh, please have a look at the graph of the crushed soda. Green and the yellow is what is actually needed for us to perceive the grape flavor. And then, well, of course, like a carbonate, you know. But uh, red, uh, blue, red, artificial flavors, actually that is not needed for us to, you know, perceive the grape flavor. But uh, what's interesting for me is that I needed the red in the graph to understand the purple, I mean like a grape flavor. Yeah, so then like that's when I look back myself and then I was getting the visual pleasure from the sculpture when I was a kid. Then I was entertained by the advertisement and food packaging um, of the, like uh, it's on really nice font, appealing phrases, nice color scheme. Then I thought like they correspond to each other in the visual communication and it's interesting to put together. Then that's when I started my work. So first, uh, well, of course, like uh, I was working on my thesis then, like uh, my thesis theme was a bizarre culture. So as a Japanese American, I have both cultures some, you know, to some extent. So first is whale meat was a traditional culture in Japan, but, but it, which looks bizarre to the Western culture. And when I came over here for the first time, I saw white selection of soda available in the US and that was, that was a surprising moment to me. So I put them together to make a whale flavored soda. And it actually is a poster in like advertising, like a banner work I was like doing. And if you take a close look at it, it has actually artificially flavored and we never use the whale, the whale meat and the no flesh juice and <laughs> Yeah, so it's all like inside the banner. Then I was making similar formats, like, you know, sculptures like that. One is actually, this is like a sardine juice, you know, fresh canned fish. And sometimes like I get inspired by very common but bizarre phrases. Like uh, one of the most interesting like uh, example for me is all purpose. Like uh, when you cook pizza, you want to actually use a flour for pizza. When you make a bread, yeah, you want to use a bread and flour. When you, I don't know, do the pancake, yeah, you want to use a specific like a flour. But in US, for some, for some reason, all purpose flour is available. Yeah, so it works for everything. So like I, I felt something funny from this. So I made this funny, all purpose pork flour. Yeah, so all you need is just like open it and then mix and bake and you can get the pork meat everywhere. <laughs> and instant noodle and the easily available likes. Yeah, when I'm walking to Costco, I find like a lot of the chickens rotating inside the oven. Yeah, like uh, it's a lot of likes like uh, rotating inside the oven. That was that looked bizarre to me, but that also looked fun to me. Then uh, Japan is really famous for instant noodles. So I just put them together. Then I made the instant real chicken. All you need is like add a hot water and three minutes, the chicken will be born. <laughs> so my MFA thesis exhibition was the hybrid of the sculpture and the food advertisement and the packaging. Well, it's which is actually a technical aspect. Then at the same time, I was exploring my self-cultural self identity and a bizarre aspect that I sometimes overlook. Like Japan has its own culture, the US has its own culture. Then sometimes like they all, they like both have like a, sometimes like a bizarre aspect. Like I never, I know like a uh, discover just from my, you know, myself. So that is really interesting one. Two. Okay. And well, like here's actually like a way I work and I'll uh, pick up interesting food culture, then try to make work out of it. So for example, it's sausage. Well, sausage, like we never know what's inside. All you can do is actually trust what's inside. So I made a ghost sausage. 
So you can actually like uh, see the ghostly figure coming out the like a sausage when you open it. Yeah, you never know what's inside. It's like a ghost to us. So all you can do is believe in it, eat it. I also sometimes get inspired by color scheme used in the food packaging. So here are complementary colors often used in instant noodles. Of course, like uh, it's say, the same, you know, color scheme is available, like a barbecue flavor is red color and a sour cream onion is green. In Japan, yeah, same scheme is used, red color and a green color. So I just made this like a you know, sculpture out of like a red and a green idea. So they are actually roosters fighting each other, you know, red and green. Yeah, they are complementary colors, but actually they also are collaborating, you know, inside the actual advertising scheme. And I draw motif from Japanese sculpture. So this case is actually a rooftop sculpture on a castle, like a fish is actually upside down on the rooftop. So uh, I'd like to just briefly show like how I just like make work. Yeah, so traditional hand building. Here's how it looks. Looks growing up, growing up, growing up. Then it's done in the green work, then it's going to the electric kiln to one time firing, then I paint it and then fire one more time, then here's how it's done. Then let's go back to the subject matter. Um, in US, you see the hot dogs everywhere. And in, when you visit Japan, actually, you might get surprised by the, how many guardian dogs are available in the temple and the shrine. So they are everywhere in Japan. So I made it both everywhere, you know, so, you know, they are actually guardian hot dogs. So they are everywhere. Uh, when I visited Home Depot, a lot of like, cacti is available, which is amazing and visually appealing. At the same time, when I go to grocery store, canned food is really appealing to me. Nice fonts, nice colors that, I really, that makes me really, really, you know, interest, you know, entertain, entertain me. So I made a canned cacti. So it's actually like an instant, like a fresh cacti coming out of the can when you open it. One day I was walking on the grocery store and uh, found this product, egg beaters. Well, which was really amazing and surprising to me because I've never seen this one in Japan. Yeah. So I made it like a, you know, I just wanted, wanted to make my like a surprising moment into the work. So I made the, actually the one product called the chicken beaters. Yeah. So what you do is just open it and the chicken's coming out. Then at the same time, like, uh, of course, I always like I get inspired by interesting phrase. So here, this case is fresh cream and the real vanilla. And well, what I think is, well, if not real banana, what it, what the hell is inside, you know? Like, so that was a really interesting phrase to me. So I just made the uh, the ice cream cone. Then I used the porcelain and the clay, which is famous for very very bright white. And when it comes out of the and of firing, then like they are really really white. So I just made the you know, title then like a real banana, real white. So grande venti, yeah, like uh, I, I, we see those words every day. They are everywhere now. So I made the uh, small, medium, large, you know, sculpture out of like the same ice cream ideas. So in here, actually, koi fish is actually like a swimming to standing up and it turned into a dragon. You know, that is a venti size. Uh, sometimes I just like I get the ideas from the like uh, sometimes like a social you know a little social movement like one example is an I you know like a slow food and a fast food ideas. So slow food is an idea to preserve traditional regional cuisine and encourage farming of plant seeds and livestock to like uh, you know suited to the local ecosystem. But that is basically like a policy against like a fast food culture we're used to. Well, of course. Of course, like uh, for the first, like I just didn't understand what slow food means. So like I just, you know, make work out of just my first impression. 
So here are actually like a fast food two year olds, you know, like they are fast foods, but they walk slow. So like they come to me slowly, you know, fast food come to me slowly. Well, where are they? Yeah, so. Then here's another one, you know, just like a large size French fry version. And theme of 2019 was sauce for me. Like I went and the one, one day I was having the buffalo wing at one place, then figured that I tasted uh, sauce flavor in a lot more than chicken wings. You know, I didn't taste chicken. I tasted sauce a lot more. So that was an interesting moment to pursue the idea. So here's actually the, in the work. I actually, it's inside to some museum currently, thankfully. And it's actually like a sauce squeezer is turning the pig. If you take a look at the butt, like a butt is pig that is turning to the cattle because it tastes very beef. So it's really strong, like a seasonal beef sauce. Yeah. Then like when I was doing sauce work, I also tested the actually decreasing uh, the color I use. Like until then, I was using full color for making sculpture, but I was also tested like a decreasing like a color palettes to use. Then for this case, I'm using yellow and the red color mainly. And at the same time of the like a yellow and the red, I was like using the green and red. Then here is actually ketchup is red and the relicious green. So a green dog on the one side, then red on the other side. Here's how it, how it looks on the face. Of course, like I was, I really loved making turtles. So like I tested like, you know, using red color only on the turtle, you know, um, I don't work. And well, koi fish is, well, I don't know, actually like a Japanese culture actually. Maybe some of you might know already that like, you know, then I always enjoy their colors that I wanted to use for my sculpture. Then this time, like I, when I was working on pork sauce, I thought it's a good timing to use their colors. So I made a koi fish out of the, you know, actually ketchup and the mustard and the rubicious squeezer, they're all coming out of. Here's actually a smaller version. So red, you know, red flavor, red color, then it's actually just koi fish. Yeah, so mustard like uh, flavor and the color. I also started using the black clay for my work recently. Then like a black is really good, you know, like a strong color then, which works really good on the museum setting. I really like it. And here's actually how they look like when it's installed in, on the, like, you know, the pedestal. It's actually really, really like a low pedestal. So like uh, you can actually look down on their sculpture as if like uh, you are looking down at the, you know, koi fish inside a pond. Then also at the same time, actually when you see this, like a squeeze of a sauce on the platter, I just like uh, trying to make them correspond to each other. Yeah, uh, this year is really odd. Actually, like my production has like slowed down a little bit. Yeah, well, of course, like I have an exhibition to come up, so I work really hard. Uh, but like this year is really odd for us. Yeah, because of this pandemic, then I was making several, like a bunch of high hamburgers right here. Yeah, so if, yeah, like from the front, like they are actually like, you know, the monstrous face there from the back, they are actually burgers. They're actually like a coming from a, like a, this, uh, like a two ideas. And it's actually like a Japanese folklore creature on the top left. And then, you know, then I just put, put them together with the burgers. Then what's interesting is like, actually like uh, this is, this figures like this creature comes out on the new, you know, New Year's all the time in Japan. Then when they bite you, um, you'll be healthy for the rest of the year. So, yeah, I want to be healthy next year. So I just had a, like a New Year's you know, ritual a little ahead of you guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. Yeah, so let me conclude my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>